Hello everyone, I'm Bok Tuk Jung from Samsung Research. Today I'm going to present our work Utopia, which automatically generates first drivers using unit tests. First testing is an effective way to uncover bugs in libraries that may not be found through traditional testing techniques. For example, OSS files has discovered more than 30,000 bugs and vulnerabilities over the past seven years. However, this process requires manually writing fast drivers, which is time-consuming and labor-intensive. Considering the number of APIs to test and the fact that projects are ever-evolving, manual human efforts for library fuzzing does not scale well. To reduce the manual, manual work, existing research has proposed automated methods for generating fuzz drivers, which synthesize a sequence of APIs from consumer code. These methods either infer API dependencies through the static analysis or observe their uses at runtime. These are general purpose and broadly applicable but there's a risk of exploring a library in semantically invalid states. Partially analyzing the consumer code due to its large size may result in incomplete API sequences. And synthesis from complex code can generate invalid sequences. The major reason for the limitation is misusing APIs. Using APIs properly means being able to call the APIs in the right sequence and providing the right in input values to the API arguments while understanding how the arguments are related. For example, the YAR project demands that the initialization, creation, and destroyer APIs be invoked in that order and that the same compiler object be supplied as an argument for multiple APIs. Adhering to valid API uses is essential in library fuzzing as it helps avoid wasting time exploring libraries in an invalid and thus uninteresting state. Furthermore, it, it prevents spurious crashes. It is important to note that these spurious crashes do not occur in end-to-end -end binary fuzzing, while they do occur in library fuzzing. We also have noticed that the developers of project communities were not particularly motivated to address the code issues caused by API misuse. So extra caution must be taken when fuzzing libraries. There are three main challenges that we addressed. Firstly, how to acquire valid API sequence. To achieve this, we do not attempt to infer API uses. Instead, we use the exact API uses in unit tests and convert UT into fuzz driver. Secondly, how to provide fuzz input as a semantically valid API argument. For this part, we analyze attributes of parameters and introduce root definition analysis technique. Finally, there are unique challenges coming from using unit tests. Today, I will only discuss how to handle the assertion checks in unit, unit tests for fuzzing. In the example, there's a null check on line three, and the same object is provided as an argument on line four. Once these are converted into fuzz driver, and if, if we omit the assertion check on line three, it could lead to spurious crashes on line four. On the other hand, the validation check on line five is difficult to pass if the input values on line four are other than one and two. This raises the question of whether to keep all assertions or completely ignore them. To answer this, we conducted experiments to better understand how the assertions are used in UT and how they affect fuzzing. Using unit tests instead of consumer code is beneficial. First, simply uh, extracting test functions is practical and simpler than the program slicing of consumer code. Secondly, each UT only consists of carefully crafted APIs to validate their proper uses by the actual designer of APIs. Furthermore, while unit testing is a widespread practice, fuzzing is relatively few. 
By utilizing unit testing to fuzzing, we can significantly increase the fuzzing adoption. In the example on the left, fuzzing on output parameter is unnecessary, and providing the large values to the memory allocation can cause out of memory errors. We classified five such attributes of parameters that can cause undesirable crashes or ineffective fuzzing based on our observations of fuzzing results. We performed data flow analysis on each API parameter by creating a DAF user chain, and at the same time, we inspected the key parameter attributes that we defined. These are output, loop count, allocation size, file path, and the array length attribute. This information was then used to give constraints to the fuzz input. For instance, if the argument is used for memory allocation, we limit the maximum value of the fuzz input. Some, some, some input parameters should not be directly supplied with fuzz input in case there's a relationship between parameters across APIs. In the example, the input to the API 2 is the output of API 1, and in, input to the API 1 and API 3 needs to be consistent. If we directly supply the fuzz input as the arguments, it would be semantically invalid. These parameter relations are already well expressed in unit test. Then how can it re reflect the relationships to the fuzz input? The key is recognizing the suitable locations in unit test to inject the fuzz input. We define the new concept of root definitions that is an assignment statement where a variable is defined with a constant. By assigning fuzzy input at only root definitions, we can preserve the original data flow and naturally adhere to the existing inter-API semantics. For that, we perform the use step chain analysis in reverse order, starting from the last API call at the end of test function. To evaluate how many UT-based projects can be automatically converted by Utopia, we selected 55 popular open source code. Utopia generated 5K working fuzz drivers from the project without human intervention. As a result, we found 123 bugs. The effectiveness of Utopia's fuzzing was evaluated by comparing it to OSS fuzz manual fuzzers. Utopia was found to be generally more effective than OSS fuzz, producing dozens more fuzz drivers and testing hundreds more APIs. The blue line in the graph represents Utopia, and the green line represents OSS fuzz. The results show the Utopia achieving roughly twice the coverage. Utopia's performance was lower with two, two projects due to some limitations, which I will cover later. We also inspected the unique coverage that is only explored by Utopia. When comparing the six libraries on OSS Fuzz with an hour of a fuzzing ca campaign per fuzz driver, Utopia explored up to 37 times more of the library code space than the corresponding unit test. In addition, we uncovered three years old all the bugs in LibIOM by simply running existing unit tests with random fuzz input values. UTs are designed to check what developers expected to be correct, but fuzzers focus on, on what they didn't expect. The result shows that these are nicely bridged by Utopia. We, stu we studied the efficacy of assertion checks in terms of coverage and execution per second. Our initial hypothesis was that keeping all assertions or ignoring them all would reveal some patterns, but the results were different from what we expected. To further investigate this, we added more rules and chose libraries with various code characteristics. We found that generally, Preserving assertion checks on null or object 
produce the better result. However, the results varied between libraries. With this, with this in mind, we propose that developers familiar with their own test code select, select the most suitable rule. Although there have been good results, there are certain cases that Utopia cannot handle. One limitation is that not all unit tests are designed to test the APIs. Some are used to test internal functions. This can often lead to fuzzing efforts fruitless. We also experienced that a bug report in LimNode was not accepted because functions in LimNode are not directly exposed to applications. Other limitations are missing error checks that are only comprehended in unit tests as well as non-conventional design of APIs such as printf can make it difficult for Utopia to understand them. Our proposed tools and results are available to the public at this URL for broader adoption and further improvements. We continue to report the bugs we find with Utopia. Also, some fuzz drivers generated by Utopia has been merged to open source communities after code review. Thank you all for joining, uh, listening my presentation. Um, now I'm willing to take questions. Uh, hello, nice talk. Uh, this is uh, Yu Hao from UC Riverside. I have a question that uh, you mentioned that since the source code will evolution, so it's not a one-time effort to update those uh, fast drivers, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, you, uh, also your master is based on the manually whitened uh, UT type. So my question is, uh, if the source code are updated, but uh, no human to whiten new uh, UT, so how would your uh, work work well, works? So do you have evaluation about that? So you mean uh, we update any, we added more APIs or update the definition of APIs, we need to- Yeah, that's possible work. since the cell code would be updated, so any changes could be possible. Yeah, in that case, we need a manual effort. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Hi, this is Chen Zhang from Nanyang Technological University. Uh, I, I was wondering that uh, how the effects of the assertions inside the unit test for, uh, uh, for transferring it to the fast driver. Since some assertions written in the unit test uh, may, may, be, may be limited to specific uh, input values, right? So um, I think you are referring the case with the online five. Uh, yeah, I mean generally some assertions uh, may specific to to some to checking some concrete values, which may cause uh, false positives if you converting them. They are they are unit test to the five drivers. Have you met uh, any any cases like this? I think that also covers this case, and in this case, we, the Utopia cannot handle that case. Okay, thanks. thanks. So uh, I think I didn't quite fully understand what you are asking, so can you talk after this? Sure, session? sure, I can email to you, right? Okay. Thanks. All right, so if we don't have any more questions, we can just thank the speaker, and...